Hi guys, it's Toddy here from Recombu, and we have just got our hands on the new 2017 version of the Samsung Galaxy A5, which is obviously the company's high-end mid-ranger, coming in after the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S7, S7 Edge, Note 7, although we don't really talk about that. Um, and it's kind of fleshing out the company's product line for 2017. Uh, it's obviously an update on the last year's model, which had the same name. Um, but we're going to have a quick unboxing, just have a quick look around the box, and uh, yeah, see what's inside. So this version, as you can see here, is from Mobile Fun, which is uh, really kind of these guys. They also threw in a whole host of cases if you want to pick up a case with the phone. And they have cases for basically every phone in the market. Um, but beyond that, the box is pretty much blank, with the exception of a few highlights on the back, which I'll get to in just a little bit. Um, I'm just going to slip the package open and just get right into it <coughs> without trying to uh, cut my fingers at the same time. So the phone is the first piece of the puzzle, the first thing you're presented with. It is a really nice looking design. This is the black model, but there are other colors, which I'll mention in a little bit. Just peel this off. That one there. See if it's got some charge. Maybe. Yep, excellent, okay. So whilst that's booting up, we have all of the paperwork. So that is in a little kind of tray here. Um, if I slide it out, it looks like we have all the standard stuff. So we have a quick start guide, we have a warranty card, and we have regional lock guide. I guess that's important for some people. Um, and then we also have <coughs> a SIM tray removal tool in, built into the tray there as well. And that is all of that. And then in the rest of the box, we have a uh, USB cable. This is a, a Type-C USB. This is one of the first, um, this, is the, this is the first A-series and device to rock Type C along with the new A3 and A7 2017. They are now fully Type C. Previous generation was still USB. Um, you get a uh, plug adapter here, which is actually one of the company's adaptive fast charging plugs. So this supports fast charging, just like last year's model. And uh, then you get some in-ear headphones, which actually look kind of nice. They have, uh, if it focuses there, they've got gold contact. They have an inline remote as well, which has got, looks like it's a cool and volume controls in there, probably microphone. In your bars, no different sizes, but um, it's always nice to get those in the box too. And what's this? Is this anything? Oh, there you go. You get other bud sizes too. So you, you can expect headphones and alternative buds too. And that is pretty much all of the box contents. So with that done, I'm just going to jump through the settings very quickly and I'll be back when I've got the phone set up and we can have a quick look at the handset itself. Okay, so we just run through the setup really quickly, so we don't have an account on here or anything yet, but I really just wanted to take you through some of the hardware and software elements of this phone um, out of the gate. So first and foremost, the form. When I picked it out of the box, it feels really, really good in the hand. It's very premium looking and feeling. It's a metal frame, which you can see here. Um, and also the most obvious thing uh, that we really like is the rounded glass on the back, the kind of rear surface glass. Um, and there's also pillared cover glass too on the front. Um, it feels very reminiscent of the Samsung Galaxy S7 in that respect. Um, and it, yeah, it's more rounded, obviously, if you look head on, the corners are more heavily rounded and, and softer. But overall, the aesthetic is really pleasing um, to the eye and in the hand as well. It feels like a very high-end device as a result. Uh, one of the interesting things to note as well on the outside is that the loudspeaker is actually up here on the side above the power button instead of down on the base. Um, <coughs> which I, I uh, might have something to do with the phone's IP68 uh, dust and waterproofing perhaps, but we think it might also have something to do with the fact that most people watch videos in landscape, so having the speaker down there is as good as any place to put it, uh, more so than there where you might cover it with your hand when you're holding the phone. So that's a really thoughtful implementation of uh, loudspeaker placement. On the, bot on the bottom there you do get a microphone, a 3.5mm headphone jack and Type-C USB. Um, which, as I said earlier, is this is the first A-series um, device to sport Type-C. On the top, you have a SIM tray, which I believe is a hybrid SIM tray that also takes micro SD card. On the back, you have the camera and a single LED flash. Um, and on the front, you have um, two backlit capacitive keys. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, a physical home button with a fingerprint sensor. So you still have that fingerprint sensor functionality. Um, and that is tied into Samsung Pay in the countries that support it. Um, the phone does also have NFC, so if you want to use Android Pay, you have that option available to you as well. Um, on the front here, you're working with a 5.2 inch Full HD Super AMOLED screen. Um, it looks really good on first impressions. Colors look very accurate, looks very pleasing. Um, brightness, if I whack the brightness up, is yeah really good um, based on what I'm seeing 
out the gate, but we'll obviously test all of this out more going forward. Um, also, a really nice thing is that they've upped the cameras over last year's model. So you have a 16 megapixel front facing and a 16 megapixel rear facing camera, so you can get excellent quality pictures out of both. And both apparently also support an f1.9 aperture, which for a high-end mid-range device like this is um, really, really impressive. Uh, that's that's as low um, or lower than some of the flagships currently on the market. So low light performance for the A5 should actually be very, very good indeed. Um, the Some other features that have trickled down from the likes of the Galaxy S7 beyond the design are things like, uh, and the IP68 um, certification, uh, things like an always on display. So even when the phone is off, I don't think I have it set up right now, but the clock, oh, there you go. It's even telling you about it right now, but you can have the clock on the screen all the time because it's AMOLED, it's very low power, so it doesn't drain the phone, um, which is a really nice feature to have. I find it very useful having used the Galaxy S7 Edge for a long time now. Um, and then let's jump to the inside. So on the inside, you're running um, a new chipset, a 1.9 gigahertz octa-core Exynos 7880, which is one of Samsung's own chipsets, backed up by three gigabytes of RAM. Um, there's also 32 gigabytes of internal storage. There's only one option available. Um, but as I said earlier, there is micro SD expandability, and that supports up to 256 gigabytes. So there's double the space of its predecessor, more RAM, and a uh, huge amount of micro SD expandability if you want to add more media into this device down the line. In the back there, you also have a slightly larger battery. This time it's a 3,000 mAh battery. And as I said earlier, in the box you do get a, um, an adaptive fast charger, which is a pretty solid fast charging technology. It's not the quickest around. Um, I think that falls to the OnePlus uh, dash charge technology, but it's still great to have fast charging on a phone that isn't a flagship. Um, always appreciated there too. Um, and beyond that, it's really just the case of the software is uh, Samsung's own um, UX atop Android 6.0. So it's not yet running Nougat, but that's okay. It will undoubtedly get an update in its lifetime, just as its predecessor. Um, and beyond that, it's a case of the colors. So this is the Black Sky model, um, which uh, looks very nice. It's just black, really. Um, the only issue is that it's quite fingerprint um, prone, which is not surprising considering it's a nearly all glass body. But there are three other colors colors available. There's a gold version, there's a blue version, and there's a peach gold version, a peach gold, peach cloud, excuse me, version, which is kind of like a reflective mirror finish rose gold, which in the UK, I believe is exclusive to Carphone Warehouse. Um, and in terms of purchasing this thing, it's available right now. So you can buy this right now for around £370, £369.99, I believe it is sim free on the likes of Carphone Warehouse. Um, that does mean it's uh, a pricier handset than for instance, the OnePlus 3, um, but it's just underneath the OnePlus 3T. Um, and it's an interesting device to say the least. It's a really uh, appealing proposition. It has nice premium elements. You wouldn't know it's not a premium phone unless you knew exactly what it was. And the performance from that processor should be pretty decent. So uh, it'd be really intriguing to see how it performs going forward. So that is a quick look at the uh, new Samsung Galaxy A5. 2017. If you have any questions about the phone, just drop us a line down below in the comments. You can read the full hands-on review and unboxing on rockomi.com slash mobile. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.